you know, that little sort of five minutes pre going on was quite nerve wracking. Walking out on the stage was a bit surreal, I've never sort of experienced it before. I just felt ill. Like, this is it, this is what I've been like sort of hyping for in the past couple of months. This is what we've been working towards. We're, we're level, we can only go up from here. I've been in the competitive scene for the UK for about around two years or so, I'd say around two years. In Summoner 56, I think that Excel first approached us um, and asked if we wanted to join them. And um, I've been with them ever since, but um, players have constantly come and gone like all the time. There's been something ridiculous, like 20, 25 roster changes, but I've, I've, I've stuck with them <laughs> until through thick and thin. Uh, I've been playing League of Legends for three to four years now. Actually, one of the first teams I played for was XL Esports. Um, that was a, a long time ago. Uh, and now I'm back to XL. So it's like a, it's like a full circle. It, I've played at multiple ESL finals, but I, I haven't actually won one. So hoping tomorrow that's, that's the time where I get my first win in the final. I've been playing League of Legends since late season two. Season four, I hit challenge and season five, I did in season six too. And the only major competitive events that I participated in was, the first one was in Fredericia in Denmark. And the other one was last year's ESL UK Premiership, where we didn't, fin where we didn't finish very high, but fourth seed and also had land playoffs in Leicester. Well, so most players have, like, lots of players have lots of uh, ways to prepare for land. But for example, I'm a player, I, I like to build um, lots of pressure on me. When I feel pressure, I play 10 times better than, than when I'm relaxed. I'm thinking about 20 things at the same time, so I'm entirely focused on the game. So it depends on the player how he prepares for the match. I've been playing uh, competitively entire year this year. I've been um, this is my fourth time in UK. I've been to Turkey three times and I've been to Poland successfully both times. I actually started to play Overwatch for a bit and spent a few months playing that. Again on the GLB and then Choke Gaming and then it was once uh, I decided to leave Overwatch. Uh, I was looking around because I'd come back to League of Legends and start playing again and I, I started to look for a team that would uh, have me and then XL last minute needed a new support and I uh, spoke to Joe Chrism and and that's, that's where I am now. Coming into the playoffs, I think we're pretty confident overall. Um, I think we, we've got a plan in place. We're going to take the right amount of execution and nullifying their strengths, but I definitely think we can get there. I feel we had a lot of changes. Um, we never stuck together as a team. There was, for one reason or another, there was something that came up. and it, To say that it didn't affect us would be wrong. Um, it affected us, but it didn't didn't demotivate us too much, which was lucky. We kept the core. Surge has always been the core of this team. Preparing for tournament games, important tournament games, in my opinion, is something that's unique to each team and unique to the way coaches do things. Normally the day before the actual game itself, we go together, get a solid pick band strategy for both sides, both red and blue side. We ensure all the players know that and know what they want to kind of achieve at a pick band right from the offset so that there's no surprises on them when it comes to it cause me saying oh can you pick up this certain champion for instance or can you play this when they've not actually been fully prepared they're all prepared on the champions that will be used at any point in the games i'm feeling a little bit nervous about tomorrow um but i think i'm more excited like playing on a big stage and stuff it's, i've done it a few times it's quite exciting and once you're in game, you kind of forget all the nerves and it doesn't really apply anymore. And you're just fully focused and try, try and play your best. Feeling pretty good, but also kind of nervous because I've never played on a stage before. So I don't know what I'm going to expect. Like, you know, having like cameras and an audience like pointing at me. It's a new experience, right? I don't, I don't know what to expect at all. Right, this is actually like a big thing. 
EB drafted an insane level of power picks coming through, and XL have drafted a composition that really is going to be aiming to play around Ash's arrow. Champions with almost hidden sustain because of her inspire. Yeah, absolutely. Tolkien now actually being uh, pressured by Rifty. Oh, huge rest of damage, and this might be the kill. Tolkien has to flash away. Rifty flashes in, hits, misses the shot plus, but gets first blood. Epiphany Bolt taking the first blood of the day. Now, how low is the Baron is the big question. Scutty, 5,000 HP. They, they need Tim to back off. They the need side. to yeah, back off. They have to back away. They're going to try and catch Zwaren, though. Here comes Rifty as well. Dragon goes low. Scutty going to go in. He does take down the mid laner. Brox and Nutri coming in from the side, though. Exhaust on the Brox, so that's huge. Now, Rifty has taken out Scutty to the side. There's the kill for Joker's Monster Brox. The curtain call comes down, though, and that's a very dead Vladimir. Jokerism gets sniped with the final shot. Ripley taking him out. Now Tolkien just needs to get away from this. He can't trade into three. There's nothing he can do. Has to, has to stay around just to slow them up. Ox will get away, but this is just delaying tactics. Almost takes down Ripley, but Nutri able to take him out. Haven't got the power spikes they need to be able to fight into this Epiphany Bolt lineup. That's Warren, what we want to see. He flashes into it. Deadly flourish from the side. Lucchesi takes down the Syndra, and they're going to look for the Baron straight away. But that is what we want to see, Sona. That is playing around the Ash Arrow. That is picking someone off. And now they can potentially even start some sieges happening. And Lucchesi's looking for the kill. If he can take down this top laner, it's a huge damage spike. Oh, oh the arrow Joker from downtown! Jokerism finally hits one, and it's a big arrow to connect. Where that Dignitas is looking for a new UK org. Perhaps they could pick up XL. Roxo gets called out. Gonna get taken down here by Tolkien. He might actually escape. Good keeper's verdict. Lucchesi off towards the side. He might play Glantz. Nuchi's going low. There's the tidal wave on Toast. Scotty from the back line will melt Toast off the map. He got absolutely Absolutely toasted. It's a double for Lucchesi. It's a single kill for Tolkien. And Scudsy gets in as well. They're looking for mid lane. Only one member of a 50 bot left the alive. Mentor inspired. Lucchesi says, Oh no, Bowley, you don't! Bowley. Melts him off the face of the summoners with Scudsy here as well. It's a 2v4. They're going to melt them away. Double for Lucchesi. Triple me. for Lucchesi. He's looking for Broxer as well. Get the quadra. He gets the quadra. Lucchesi and Scudsy. Absolutely huge. I said there was one lane. One lane for XL where he comes through and he's mechanically better and can win it outright. It is Lucchesi on that Vladimir. He has been a monster this game. And XL Esports going one up here. And it was really promising. We were really pumped, you know, super hyped by the end of the game. We were like, come on, it's one more game. And then we make it to the final. That, that's insane, you know? Like, we never would have thought we could get that far, especially. Last ESL season, we finished like, what? Ninth, ninth place. I don't even think we made it to the top eight at the time. Um, so to be able to be so close to the final, it was just, wow, like that's insane. We just have to, you know, stay on the ball for one more game and then we're okay. Absolutely massive. Look at Lucchesi getting chased out as well. Epiphany Bolt taking it to Excel here. They're looking to take early advantages. Lucchesi has to flash. And Broxus can just put it, oh, the deadly flourish from long range as well. Lucchesi gets exhausted. It's going to be first blood. It's going to be Epiphany Bolt. Look at the plants. There's four of them. They're melting Nutri down. Brox is going to come in. Curtain call goes down. Brox are looking for this. Ragnarok saying Jokerism does not have flash and has no escape. Nor does Orcs. It's a double for Brox. That frozen mallet. Looks like another gank's going to happen in this bot lane. Jokerism does have flash this time. Curtain call comes down. He jumps away with the arcane shift. Is this just a, a dive from Brox? He's going in. The Stranglethorn comes out. Orcs has no escape. He's just dead. Brox are very happy to dive the tower and picks up his fourth kill of this game. Jokerism steps straight into Broxer. Orcs jumps in as well. Toaster's dead. But here come Rifty and Broxer. Broxer once again takes the kill for himself. Keeper's verdict knocks them both up. Orcs has no escape from the rampaging Broxer. Look at them start to eek back towards even XL, slowly clambering their way into a final position. They want this finals. They want to be their first ever LAN finals. To his mispositioning. Zwaren gets melted. Shockwave on three. The keeper's verdict, though. That is absolutely huge. Here comes the curtain call. Box has taken down Zwaren. Tolkien with a Nardo gnawing through his opponents. And XL turn around the fight. It's all very well if Oriana lands a shockwave, but when she's got little to no damage like she has here, Brox is the target. XL he Esports. Melted through. Ox taking him down. It's a shutdown on Brox. Toast is trying to do what he can. Locks up Tolkien. But he just doesn't have the damage at the moment. The tower will fall and XL are turning this one on its head. Those big targets is going through the roof. This is pretty good for XL Esports. This is pretty good indeed. I'm getting chills thinking about XL getting to the finals. Think about how these guys are feeling on the stage right now. The first time XL are within touching distance of getting to the playoff finals 
and they are starting to win out this game. The hair on the back of their necks must be standing on end. Drake is the target here. Pick me both should have it. Lucchesi takes out Nutri. But here comes Boxer and Lucchesi is dead. Toaster low up towards the back line. Flashes away from Jokerism. No, and Jokerism is going to die. Toaster goes down as well and it ends up just being a 2v3 because here comes Wawen. Ox is dead. It's a 3v2. The shockwave comes out. And Scuds is so low. Jumps away. Tolkien won't be able to survive a great gnar. He is actually going to jump. Rifty looking for the chase though, if they can get onto XL here, they can take a huge lead off this. Rifty will chase out Tolkien, the fights keep on turning around. Okay, so we're actually starting to see Ox do work, Jokerism doesn't get the curtain call connection, there comes the second one though, and Broxa is just going to kill Jokerism, Toaster helps from a long way away as well with the curtain call. Is this curtains for XL's chance to win out this game? Tolkien's in the midst of all four of them and doesn't have his Nar. he gets taken out, he oh, does take new dream response, he's in the GA. Zwarven solo, he gets Lucchetti though! With the shockwave, they've taken out Nara as well. Three members of XL died, and Epiphany Bolt are looking for this. They want that inhibitor, they want the game, they want to take this to a best of three. Lucchesi looking for the flank here, three orbs are in play. Nutri stunned up, there's the Unleashed Power, but Nutri heals himself through it. Lucchesi caught out with the Deadly Flourish, a shockwave, a great Zonyas from Lucchesi keeps himself alive. But now Epiphany Bolt are going to try and capitalize, jumps onto Scuzzy, Orcs is still there. Rifty with the teleport, absolutely isolates them. Joe Quism gets called out by Rifty. Scuzzy has to jump away, gets himself out. Epiphany Bolt are looking for the play here, they're looking for Joe Quism. That's, that's curtains for here. This should be the game. I think Epiphany Bolt had this. Lucchetti is up, he's gonna see if he can stop them, but he just can't do it. And XL lose out to Epiphany Bolt, who take it to a game three. We had some misplays, and uh, they just took a lot of towers and we were basically just scaling for the late game because we had the split push advantage. Due to Jin, our team is forced to split up whenever he ults, right? Because we need to dodge the bullets. And that just allows them to, to pick someone off and then force a fight. And now it's just weaker than Poppy in team fights at that stage. It was one of those things where like, because they were ahead and they had they were ahead in uh, structures, it was like, if we if we keep winning team fight after team fight after team fight, we'll slowly get close to winning. But if we lose one team fight, we lose like a good chunk of our base. I think after that second game was when like sort of we got we got put like back down to earth where we like right okay we can actually still lose this. I think after the the second game I think Epiphany Bolt definitely had the momentum because obviously like coming off the back of a win you have momentum that's just how it works. Uh, I don't think we were particularly down but it obviously didn't help us like coming off a loss it's it's not the greatest feeling like we, we wanted to close it 2-0. Scoundrel, we are into the final game of this best of three. It's going to be absolutely immense. And before we actually get onto the Summoner's Rift, I just want to make one point about Pick and Ban. We all thought it was Varus mid. It's not. It's Varus on Jokerism. Jokerism has taken Varus and Lucchesi has gone Ezreal mid. They've actually done it. They've actually done it. Get that poke oh, down. Went to Thunderlords. Lucchesi is being very brave. Does still have Flash, does still have Arcane Shift, but he's well out of position here. Arcane Shift's across the wall, trying to get away from Zwarin. I think game three started very negatively. Like, we got behind massively. Um, which is honestly, uh, well, mine and Joe Prism's bad. We fed him bad information that at least was bot and then at least turned up mid like two seconds later and then that lost the matchup. Nukezi needs to dodge out the bums, here comes the curtain call and Nukezi's just dead! Scudzi now the target, one more curtain call but doesn't even need it. They're gonna lose this tier one tower in the top lane also. Rifty actually able to duel against Tolkien, nothing seeming to go XL's way at this point. We fell behind significantly in early around mid lane and when you do that on a comp that is siege based with double AD carry you never actually have the opportunity to see. Slightly better time double bomb there. Would have taken Lucchesi down. The first bomb lands. He's just trading with the tower there. Toaster is so low. Flashes across the wall. Brilliant escape. And Lucchesi will fall as well. The chrono shift comes out. As well, and it's back to full HP. And they're going to siege onto that bot lane tier 2. XL just somehow collapsing in on themselves. And if you never get to a sieging point with a siege comp, you're completely negated in what you're trying to do. Baron is basically gone. They do have the tidal wave. Ox is going to try and steal this one away, but Epiphany Bolt 
take the Baron 25 minutes in. The teleport's coming down as well. Here's the curtain call. EB sniping one after another. They take the first kill. They take the Baron. And this is an awful position for Lucchesi. Heroic charge into the wall. Keeper's verdict up. Deadly flourish down. Lucchesi has fallen and XL are tearing themselves apart. Epiphany Bolt absolutely melting through them at the moment. Yeah, they, this is a game that is going to be very difficult for XL to make their way back into right now, if if they can at all, to be completely honest with you, Sona. 12k down at 25 minutes. I think I was one of the main reasons why we were able to keep in the game with like my constant wave clear and poking. It meant that they couldn't siege towers. We, we started to win fights, we built the momentum at the end. They're going to start the siege even further, pushing Lucchesi and Joker Risen back. Can this be a turnaround for XL? People are low. Oh, Toast, toast is dead. dead. What was that, Toast? You totally missed position. Tanked up this tower for days for his team. Perhaps miss caught on the wrong side of the battle, but gets back behind his battle lines. Here comes the slicing maelstrom. This could be used. Toast tries to flash away. The chrono shift was perfect. And the keeper's verdict knocks him back as well. They do take down the Zillion Toaster back to full HP, though. Red HP bars across the board, Rifty and Nutri so low, but will be able to escape. They vacate the premises and get themselves away, but Toaster's not done. Now he is, shut down for Jokerism. Even though you might be extending your lead, you're actually losing out the benefit you get from it because the other team is building more items and you're stuck at six. Yeah, absolutely. They need, I think, you know, they can just force things with the Jin Ultimate under tower. What? Lucchesi just takes out Toaster 1v1. Jokerism, still very healthy. Tolkien off towards the side gets picked out by Rithi. Nutri Makaros himself, they haven't really got much out of this yet. If they can close on Rithi, perhaps they can stop him pushing this tower in. The tower's going lower and lower. Oh, there comes the slicing Maelstrom! That's huge! They take down Nutri, they're gonna look for Broxer as well. They have lost Lucchesi though. Tolkien on Toaster, Tolkien takes down Toaster! What? My Excel! Word. What is this game? Sorry, the inhibitor turret is incredibly low, it falls. Toaster takes it, here comes Tolkien, he's burst! He's melted off the rift! And now it's up to Jokerism and Lucchesi to try and clean this one up. We have seen Rifty get popped into that GA. Broxer is incredibly low in the back line. But it looks like EB are happy just to take the turret and back themselves away. Although Rifty has something else to say here, he's still got his GA. Zwarin is about halfway back to that chrono shift. He's taking a lot of poke from those piercing arrows and needs to be incredibly cautious. There is the critical one. Luca's screen froze for a Windows update, and then we and then we paused, and then we were like, shit, like when you unpause, they're just gonna kill you because you're really far up. And he's like, I couldn't move. Like I've got arcane shift up, I've got flash up. We unpause the game, and then his screen freezes again. And then his computer just like goes black screen and then a Windows update starts for about 15 minutes. And then the game starts up again. When we unpause, I just die instantly and the game ends. And Epiphany Bolt take down the Nexus and take it two and one over X. The reason we lost that last fight was because his screen froze. Luca didn't die. They probably still would have closed. It would have taken them a bit longer and we would have had a shot at winning. I was like more frustrated than anything else with like the whole PC issues. Like, it's like one of the most frustrating ways to lose a game. And the admins are like, yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. So we just had to just give them the game, really. And, and I'm not going to be the sort of person who says, oh, you know, we would have won without that, because obviously not. But it was, it was a pretty sour ending to the series, because, I mean, we, we got massive behind game three. I'm not going to pretend we played as well as we could. I'm not going to pretend we would have won it. But it's just, you know, unfortunately, I ended with, we couldn't see how it played out. Roll, I think, um, didn't went too well. Didn't go too well, rather. Um, I think as a team we all massively underperformed as individuals mostly and still we were sometimes able to do our job but on a macro basis especially we just felt behind in, in the early game in every single game and that's something you can't afford to do in the current meta. I'm kind of disappointed personally because I know there was a lot more that I could have done but um, I think as a team as a whole we, we didn't perform to our, our usual level so we've just got to like work on the consistency and uh, so we, we perform well all the time. I think the experience overall has been really good. I think uh, what ESL have provided themselves has been super. Um, uh, there's very few kind of uh, downsides to, to the service that's been provided for the players and myself. I was feeling quite good about the game, more nervous about being on the stage, and we didn't perform how optimally. We could have done a lot better. Um, but in terms of nerves, I kind of outdone myself. Like I sort of was able to sit down and you know, play my game and basically get on with it just like I would 
sitting at home playing, just focus on the game and, and try and perform to my best level. Um, so, you know, even though it wasn't the outcome that I expected, I think this was still a major accomplishment for me personally. So I, I feel quite proud about that, but also slightly disappointed because I, it wasn't the outcome that I did expect. But I can't dwell on it for too long, there's nothing really productive can come out of that. I mean, I've enjoyed the weekend. Uh, obviously it's unfortunate result we had. Uh, we expected to do better and we'd hope to do better, but you know, everyone sort of has hardships, I guess, and we just have to move past it. I've enjoyed the time, met a lot of people who I hadn't met before apart from online and had fun with the team, so. I'm not disappointed at all. I mean, I'm disappointed in that I feel that they didn't show what I know they can do, but we didn't have any expectations. We came in with the best that we could be and we did the best that we could. On the day, things change, games are taken off other people. It's, it is what it is. I'm, I'm never disappointed in them because they work as hard as they do.